episode 124. Lloyd Weiner, old school, 1927-1945, 18 years. It's interesting, from 1927 to 1941, played a lot of games. But after 1941 through 1945, only got about, a, about 200 more games after that, 220 more games. So in a four-year period, only 220, 230 games. I'd have liked to have seen more games because his stats are pretty good. If you're wondering about this hat, it's from Colombia, South America. Okay. The only reason why I like it, it's a fitted hat. Also, it gives you very good protection shade because I had a skin cancer removed here. Okay. 18 years. That's my wife. Say hi. Hi. My dear wife. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Lloyd Wayner, 1927-1945. 1993 games. 1,201 runs scored. That's good. You get over 1,000 runs. 2,459 hits. I told you, that's basically in about 15 years. You want to know the average on that one? 24.59 divided by 15. About 163 hits per year, which is very good. 281 doubles. He only hit 27 home runs. For his entire 18-year career. That's incredible. How do you make the Hall of Fame with only 27 home runs? The way you make it is that you have 2,459 hits and you have a lifetime batting average of 316. That's how you make the Hall of Fame. Played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Listen to this. His first year he comes into the league He's 21 years old. You know what he does? 150 games. 223 hits. How about that? 133 runs scored. 355 batting average. This is 1927, the year that Babe hit 60 homers. So he's playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's 21 years old. Lloyd Wayner comes in and hits and gets 223 hits and bats 355. You have a bona fide all-star on your team. 1928, what does he do? He follows that up, 22 years old. 221 hits and bats 335. So in two years, he has 450 hits. What a start, and he's 21, 22 years old. Listen to this, his third year, Lloyd Wayner. Plays every game. 234 hits, three years in a row, over 220 hits. So he tops it with 234 and bats 353. His first season, 355. Second season, 335. Third season, 353. Now you know why I like the old school players? I mean, these are incredible numbers. Would you not agree? 1930, he has 68 games. Too bad. You know what happened? Got hurt? 94 hits. Still bats 362. So he's a hitter. 1931, for the fourth time, he goes over 200 hits in five seasons. 214 hits, that's 314. 1932, 188 hits, 333. So look at this. 355, 335, 353, 362, 314, 
333, his first six years. He was on a marvelous pace, probably the best pace of all time to start off because he started off 21 years old. 1933, this was 30 games, that's 276, something happened. Next year, 283, 173 hits. 1935, 180, 166 hits, 309. 1936, 321. 1937, 177 hits, 330. 1938, 194 hits, 313. 1939, missed some games. 285. 1940, he's 34 years old, 259. That was a dying year, but he, he missed a lot of games. 1941 through 1945, play, playing very little. I wonder why. I wonder what happened. So 1941, Say 256, 1942, 261, 1944, 321, not playing much, 1945, 263. So he ends up with a 316 lifetime batting average. This Band-Aid's really not very good. I'll get another one. I want to tell you that Lloyd Wainer, very good hitter. 2,459 hits in basically 15 years. 316 lifetime batting average. How many times over 300? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 seasons out of 15 years roughly. If you go 10 seasons or more, 300, you're a good player. He had 11. Uh, he had four 200-hit seasons with a high of 234. His highest batting average was 362. Quality player, Lloyd Wainer. I'm, I bet you're surprised about him because you haven't heard of him. I have. All right, next player on the list, Archie Vaughn. Archie, A-R-K-Y. Thanks for watching, and I'm out.